how did you first come to hear of Bite Size Who? I don't think I'd heard about it until Brett contacted me in the first instance. And uh, I'd never, never heard of it. I, I tend not to use things like YouTube very often. I, I do it quite a lot. You know, when I do things like uh, Croft's Dog Show, I'm commentating all day, live, uh, a live stream of what's happening at the show all day uh, on YouTube for four days. I've never looked at it. <laughs> I don't watch things, you know, I, I, I don't seem to have the time. I should have, but I don't seem to have. So when, when Brett contacted me, I didn't know anything about it, but he sent me uh, a couple of uh, the sketches to take a look at, and I thought, oh, they look quite fun. And so when he came up with the script idea that uh, fitted me and he asked me to do it, I, I was delighted. What was it that attracted you to this project? I just thought it was, it was a nice, light-hearted way of looking at, uh, uh, at things which... I mean, sadly, so much has gone wrong with what happened to Doctor Who in the early days, with the wiping of the tapes. The ta everyone's tapes were wiped, but they transferred everything to Telecine. Some were sold, some were dumped. The, the BBC was very careless about ke keeping things. And the only reason many of my episodes still exist uh, for Doctor Who, there's only 17 of them that exist, was because an archivist happened to go into an office at the BBC about the size of this room that we're in here. And they looked and, uh, and there was a great pile wrapped up in polythene bags, by a massive pile. I said, what's all this? And I said, well, it's going to the skip. She said, no, it's not. And it was down to her, she took them, and amongst that were a lot of Doctor Who things. They would have been ju junk forever, and they would have gone forever. So what pleases me about Bite Size is it can tell the story of a full serial of Doctor Who a bit quicker than I've just told that story of the tapes. <laughs> Um, what were your feelings when you realised you were about to star in a parody, not only of Doctor Who, but of Blue Peter? Uh, oh, I was very angry when I first discovered that. I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to get my own back on these people. And I've tried, but I failed. So I did this in the end. No, I mean, I, I thought, it's fun. I've done uh, several parodies of Blue Peter. I did one which wasn't exactly a parody of Blue Peter. It was a parody of... I used to have a production company of my own, and uh, we used to do fairly cheesy uh, corporate videos back in the 80s and 90s. And I did the same thing for The Office. I was in The Office for one episode. What's the single most important thing to your business? The staff. That's right. The customer. Mm -hmm. Coming from a different angle. And uh, that was uh, the training day, and I had I made the training video. And a lot of people asked me, and I said, did you mind them using that old video? You know, we don't have bloody cheeky, we made it. You know, that was a, a totally original stuff. And that was great fun to do. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I enjoyed working with Ricky. Was there a marked difference between what you expected the shoot to be like and what it actually ended up being like? And if so, what the, was the, it? There was a marked difference in that the, the actual shoot was shambolic and I expected it to be quite good. Don't point at me, I'm not going to our director, I'm afraid, I'm sorry about that. Uh, on the back of that, could you briefly describe your filming experience with Bite Size Who? Well, it was a mess from beginning to end. And then, you know, the, the, it was in a room that wasn't soundproofed, we had people drilling things in walls around the corner, it was just chaos. I mean, so badly organised, I'm surprised we actually got anything on tape. Well, we don't do tape, it's digital now, but I mean, wherever you put it, it surprise it's there. However, no, I actually had a very good time. Um, Brett had planned it very well, and everyone taking part, you and Suzanne, and uh, uh, Miss Padley, and I can't remember her first name, Hannah, lovely Hannah. Oh, I call you yeah. Miss Padley all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they, they, were, they were all <laughs> absolutely lovely, and I apologise for getting your name wrong. Um, but uh, no, it, it was just, it was, it was a pleasure. Um, not hard. Uh, the worst bits probably were me forgetting lines. And then at the end you can throw wobbly at me when you discover that I'm just a, a despicable oh, bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> lines that are supposed to be spoken naturally, as opposed to acted, have to be in the cadence and the rhythm of the person who speaks them. And with, with, with apologies to, to Brett who wrote it, he wasn't writing in my cadences, he was writing for his sketch. And so I have to adapt to that and still try to make it sound like Peter Purvis. And that's sometimes just a bit difficult. It, it probably sounds weird to anyone watching who, who's not tried it, but it is, you have rhythms in your own speech and you have phrases that you would use, and none of my phrases were in there, they were all Brett's phrases. 
It's not that they were wrong, but I had to get round that. And so that's just a little bit more difficult than I anticipated. I thought I'd learned it perfectly, but I don't think I did anything in one take, which annoyed me because I like to do things in one take. We do. We do. And I've got some good advice. Sorry. That's okay. It isn't advice. I've got some good news. Good Sorry, news. My fault. Yeah, that's okay. We did that's this right. now. You've had an association with Doctor Who for 53 years now. Uh, does it ever get tiresome talking about it and being involved with it, or do you embrace it? I fully embrace it. It's, uh, it's provided me with uh, a small source of income in addition to a, a miserable old pension. Uh, because I mean, the BBC never gave us pensions, so in my pensions were I managed to put aside during the course of a, a freelance career, which isn't always easy. So, you know, it's, it's provided me with a little bit of extra income, which is very nice. I like going to the conventions and meeting people. Certainly I like the dedicated Doctor Who conventions. I'm not that fond of the other kind, the, the, the big comic cons and things. I go to them and they're, 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 they're okay, but they, they don't have the same atmosphere about them. The dedicated Doctor Who ones, the people that are there want to see you. And that's really nice, so it's very flattering. And so I enjoy them. So yes, I embrace it. What was your favourite moment, if any, during the filming of this sketch? Uh, I think it was in the last scene that we shot where I was able to cuddle Suzanne. I thought that was rather nice. Aww. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> <clears throat> Not any of the fighting or fumbling about. <laughs> I didn't like the fighting and fumbling about, particularly the fumbling from you, Brett. It was most uncalled for. Uh, I, well, I, tried, I thought uh, you might like it, I'm sorry. I, I mean, it, it, was, it was all totally enjoyable. It's, it's, it's a, I hope it's a funny sketch. You can never tell, you know, that no. when you don't work with an audience, when you work with an audience, you've got immediate feedback, you know it works. Things like this are very, very difficult to judge. I think it's funny. If it's not funny, then fine, we did our best and we hope we haven't offended anybody and you know, next time we'll do it better. I think, I think it was fun and uh, the, the ones that I saw and the reason I came to do it was I thought they were amusing, the ones that I'd watched. So if we can do the same, I'll be very happy. Can you think of any spoof ideas or possible scenarios that could include Stephen Taylor in the future? I think a, 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 a costumed remake of the massacre would be absolutely fantastic and if we could possibly do the same script that was actually done for television that would be wonderful there, there is a book also of uh, the massacre which John Lucarotti wrote after the event it's totally different same story same principle of the story same characters and all the rest but totally different uh, way of dealing with it which is quite interesting so uh, Donald Tosh rewrote much of what went out on air because of the original script not being quite of the kind that he wanted to produce and he was the story editor so he had the last word it's quite a good position for brett to be in that's why bite size is so rubbish <laughs> <laughs> and the irony is you played donald tosh in the very first oh, film, oh, so. <laughs> a very spoofified version yes. tosh, donald, tosh, donald tosh and his big mustache I, I can feel the love from you, Peter. It's, not, <laughs> it's very, very feel lovely to feel love. <laughs> if you were to describe this classic sketch show in just two words, what would you say? Bloody awful. If you could summarise this experience in three words, what would they be? Absolutely bloody awful. <laughs> you know what, everyone says that. <laughs> This is when I actually do go. No, it's been fun, guys. Had a really nice time. Thank you very much. No, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much, Peter. Cut. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>